Good evening, everyone. It's Tom Sidney Bushnell, aka Numbers, here from a site club from the Tom Numbers show. News with Tom Numbers, top of your game. And I've got a fella, a new friend of mine that is top of his game, and that's Mr. Matt Geiger from Midas Gold Group. Matt, how are you, buddy? Good, man. Doing well. Good to be uh, working with you now. This should be fun. Yeah, I'm looking forward to this. So, uh, me and Matt have got to know each other over the last few weeks, and um, we've been introduced by a couple of good friends, so thank you to both of them. And, uh, yeah, good vibes. I like working with people that have good vibes, good energy. Well, it's funny because I've been listening to you for years. You know, I've, I've like, you know, there's certain people, because I'm like you, I'm in the Patriot community, you know, yeah. and it's, I feel like, you know, with our, you know, the people that we try to partner with and we advertise with, it's like, we're one of, we're one of those people, right? We're part of your yeah. audience. You know, I mm -hmm. work with, you know, all kinds of people and it's like, I started out watching them and then eventually it's like, it's also, you don't want to like go after them as sponsorships because it's like, you don't want to seem disingenuous, you know, yeah. but at the same time, it's like, you know, we, we really like that community. We get along with it. It's like everybody that calls in, it's like family, you know, we did that trip down yeah. in Arkansas recently. We saw pastor Bob Joyce, you know, so it's like, we'll do the same thing for view your viewers. You know, maybe we'll take them next time we go to Arkansas, we'll sponsor the trip and bring them out to, uh, you know, the household of faith and, you know, Benton, Arkansas. Yeah. Yeah. It's fun. We Definitely. really can. Yeah. Maybe I'll come over for some of those because that would be usually great, I'm in the States each year. I didn't get there last year, but maybe sometime this year I might come over. Yeah, Absolutely. that could be cool. Absolutely. Yeah, yeah that could be cool. And Arkansas is beautiful, by the way. I had never been, and it's it's actually incredible. Incredible place. Yeah, I've not been to I've not been to Arkansas. 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 I've not been there. But it'd be I, nice. I, I, and it'd be nice to meet Mr. Bob, Mr. Bob Joyce. That would be cool. Yeah. I've heard it's a special place, the church that he goes to. And I've heard, it's, I've heard good things about it. Yeah. It's small, but um, I think people are starting to figure out, you know, kind of what's going on. And I've heard that because I have friends that are local, local there that go there every Sunday. And it's become quite the, the tourist attraction, to say the least. Yeah. yeah. Kind of like kind of like Graceland. <laughs> <laughs> Graceland, yeah. Graceland, Neverland. You've got all that. Yeah, there's all this all these lands that are gonna come back into into favor and uh yeah. enlarge upon, yeah. Um so you're based in Arizona, Matt. Phoenix. Yeah? Yep. Phoenix. Phoenix. Okay. And then on the screen actually you'll see. So people want to call Matt, you've got your number. What's that? 480-726. What oh it's just gone again. What's the rest of it? 480-725-0536. And maybe I should kind of, sure. background, kind of background about what we do. Yeah. We're, just, yeah. We're, just, we're a gold and silver storefront, right? You see all these gold companies advertised on TV. Yeah. These guys, they're just big call centers. You know, there's no gold or silver there. You know, most of them are in LA, you know, Los Angeles, you know, where these guys, you know, they sell gold and silver by day and, you know, are trying to become the next, uh, you know, Aerosmith by night. Yeah. Right. And uh, they, they, by night. Yeah, they, they really don't know what they're doing. And we're just a little storefront here where we actually have, you know, gold, silver, millions of dollars of gold and silver on site. Yeah. Uh, people like the relationship. Um, you know, a lot of people that do business with me, I send them, you know, Kennedy memorabilia, George magazines, you know, good ones. Yeah. Yeah. So it's like, I, I try to give something back too. And uh, people love it. It's, we've developed a great, you know, um, friendship in the Patriot community because I'm one of them. Yeah. Right. And so are you. And it's yeah. like, I think people, I think people just want to do business with like-minded people, you know, people that have their best interests at heart. Yeah. And that's, what we, do. we do, you know, physical gold, physical silver here. You could do it through cash. Right. And we do gold IRAs, right. We do it a little bit differently than other companies, which I think people will like when they yeah. learn about the way we do it here. Um, you know, so and that's, that's my business, you know, it's pretty straightforward stuff. We're not reinventing the wheel, but people know, you know, if they're putting up, you know, certainly if the significant money, they know they can trust us and we'll do a great yeah. job. So, yeah. yeah, pretty easy stuff. Well, I got that feeling when I met you. I just had a good vibe. I mean, thank you. Uh, I had, uh, well, you're welcome, man. That's true. You know, it's like, that's what I do. So there's a few things I have people that I work with and do things. And all the things I do, I I use them directly, like 
got shown great like, people know about that and like a few vitamins and things and, and uh, supplements and other stuff. But when I came across you guys, um, I mean, bless them, I had been, you know, talking to some other people in, in the Golder area. Um, but I was just really impressed with with you and uh, with James and just the feel of the company and the people that got me in touch. And I just was like, yeah, I like this. I like this. And, um, and I like that you were very into the Kennedys. Um, you've obviously got some great one memorabilia. You've got George and you've done shows with Rachel and I was like, it's just, it's a good, it's a good feel. It's a good, you know, I liked it. It was a good, good feel. And the other thing that really highlighted it is you said something really clear and precise that I think a lot of my viewers watching this right now can relate to. And it says a lot of people probably on the fence thinking about gold and silver, they've got um, 401ks and they're not sure, they're just not sure who to go with. And it, I felt that with you, I was like, ah, that, that resonates. I know, because if I felt that in terms of all the different gold people out there, I know my audience back home when they're watching this right now, they're going to feel something similar. And so maybe if you could go into the difference on the 401k. I think a lot of people would really like that map. Well, yeah, I, I mean, and, and thank you for all that. And it's it's one of those things where, you know, you're dealing with people's life savings and people want to know yeah. that they're not, they're not getting screwed. You know, yeah. I would the same way, right? I'd want to do business with a like-minded person. Yeah. Um, I, would, I would say what we do differently is we help you pick first and foremost, the right product choices. Okay. So if you've ever listened to Juan, right? Uh, you can listen to my interview with Juan. I interviewed Juan two months ago on my yeah. podcast, which is the Boomerang podcast, right? People can go watch that. It's just on YouTube. We'll the, the link. Yeah, we'll put the link below, yeah. Um, and what Juan says, and I've, I've kind of assumed this for years now, but you want recognizable gold and silver. So what is that? That's U.S. coinage, specifically gold eagles, silver eagles, basic, right? Yeah. Basic stuff. But that, I think, is going to be a very important detail because, of course, the U.S. Mint that produces them is a division of the Treasury Department. And the way the money works here in the United States is it's supposed to be produced by the Treasury, not the Federal Reserve, but the Treasury. Yeah. So therefore, they become constitutional money. So I think what we're doing is we're setting people up for success, whatever he says in the interview. I think he says about a year, year and a half from now when things really collapse, um, you're walking into that new system, whatever it looks like, with constitutional money. Yeah. And then as far as the IRAs are concerned, with IRAs and 401ks, um, the IRS doesn't allow you to take possession of that physical gold and physical silver. Why? Because what is gold and silver? It's money, right? So you would trigger you would trigger a taxable event if you took possession because it would look like a distribution. That's the point of security facilities, right? Uh, yeah. Depositors. Um, I use the one and I use ones out of Dallas, Texas, because my feeling is is locality is going to matter. A lot of people use, you know, Delaware, L.A., you know, you don't want your stuff in these places. You, I, I think where you really want to have your stuff is you want to have it in a place like Dallas because yeah. first and foremost, you get what's called segregated storage there, which means you get your own locker, right? It costs you 200 bucks a year to store your stuff. You get your own space. It's not commingled with other people's yeah. holdings. And it's in a place like Dallas where Dallas has, you know, a, a five gun per capita, you know, gun ownership. Yeah. I don't think yeah. things are going to be getting too chaotic in Dallas, Texas when, when things hit the fan. Yeah. So I do try to think in terms of, and they're quick, you know, if you ever wanted to transact on your gold or silver, they're quick, they're speedy, you know? So I've, I've investigated these facilities over the years. And I really find that the one that we use in Dallas um, easily is by far the best of all the different worlds. Yeah. Uh, both from locality to ease of transactions to having your own storage space for the same amount of money you'll pay anywhere else. Yeah. But I think those are kind of important details that the average person wouldn't, um you wouldn't typically ask questions like that you know yeah yeah and i'm assuming then so people if they book an appointment they could go down to their own store their part yeah. of the facility and go and physically see it and touch it and good if you fill out the paperwork you could go pick it up if you wanted to your distribution really? day, just fill out a form or two boom 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 submit it to us you go down there and pick it up if you really wanted to take it home good okay well that's that's really reassuring for people because there are i know there are i know there's i know there's thousands and thousands of people in my audience that are on the fence in regards to this area and they don't know who to go with so this is really good information and and um and you should use your instincts as well use your instincts people you know this is an instinctive and an intuitive community that we're in 
we're being trained more and more. Where's the light? Where's the darkness? Go with the light, you know? And uh, yeah. So, yeah. And to speak to your viewers directly, it's like, I work with this audience, you know, a lot of your audience probably follows Rachel, probably follows some of the other people that we work with. Yeah. And it's because we do a good job for people. It's like gold and silver is very straightforward stuff. It's easy to do. Yeah. It's just, if you go to the wrong place, I mean, there's horror stories about some of these companies, especially out of LA. Right. Yeah. I could, I don't want, I don't want to name companies because I'm not trying to throw people under the bus, but it's, it's a nightmare. And it's yeah. like, if you want them done right, just give me a call, you know, make it real easy. I got people that do stuff in the background. I got a couple of assistants here, you know, they do all yeah. the paperwork, make it real easy. But I think more importantly, it's, it's why is gold important? Why is silver important? Because you want to get out of the banks right now. The yeah. banks, are really, they're failing, right? We've seen already what in 2023, I think six or seven bank closures, not to mention the big branches, right? They're closing down branches. What are they doing? They're making it difficult for people to bank and access their money. Yeah. Right. So that's, and I think after whatever's coming on the other side, and I know people have different theories, Nassar, I'm not a big Nassar, Jassar guy. I think it just invites in the same bureaucracy that we just got out of, if anything else. Um, quantum financial system. I mean, it's like, show me the quantum, right? I mean, do I think there'll be a digital component? Sure. But I think you really have to go back to something like gold back money or what Juan talked about, you know, maybe gold, silver and oil back money, but oil backed money from oil from the United States that we drill ourselves. Um, diversification in the dollar, right? We used to have diversification in the dollar. If you look historically, we had different types of US dollar, right? We had Federal Reserve notes, we had uh, gold certificates, silver certificates, US notes, those are the ones with the red seal. Um, so I think it's to protect ourselves from the politicians in the future. I think you just need to diversify the dollar um, after whatever's coming. And that's what I think Trump will do. Yeah. Well, he's spoken about a level playing field, hasn't he? He's spoken about that before. And I remember um, I remember the year before 2020, which was 2019. Right. So I was in the States for about a month, traveling around different states, seeing friends um people i know and so i stayed one night in vegas and i was in treasure island in the hotel there at the end of the strip and right down there is where trump hotel is so i took a picture of the trump hotel not knowing all the events of 2020 that's going to come in but then i remember in 2020 there was a tweet from the trump vegas hotel and it said basically Something I know what like it said. Gold, gold is the standard and silver linings are pretty cool as well. Pretty cool too. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. That was uh, June or July of 2020. Yeah. Yep. So that was a, a big, the big gold bar. You know, it's like a yeah. big gold bar sticking into the sky. Yep. Exactly. It's like this huge gold bar. And then I think they had a cloud and there was a reflect, you know, silver yep. lining of the cloud as well. It's like, there it is. It's right there. And they're telling us. And so it's, it, it's, it's coming, you know, I think a lot of it's probably already been done, but in terms of public disclosure, full disclosure is 176. Um, level playing field is 176. Full conclusion is 176. November the 5th, 176. So it's my audience know that how I feel about then, and, uh, and we're not far away, you know. So this is 2024. This is the time to get ready and prepare. And, uh, and if you've got a lot of savings or if you haven't got much or, or whatever you've got, get yourself some real assets, get some real money, you know? That's what it is. Just money at the end of the day. Yeah. Yeah. It's just me. Remember that tweet. I'm surprised you remember that tweet. I'm like one of the only people that remembers that. Well, I, I, that shows you in good standing with me. Cause I remember it and it's like, yeah. well, okay. Matt remembers it as well, you know? And it Watch was, it was a major movie. one. What was it? We saw the Jan Halper Hayes interview uh, back in August of 23. And yeah. she talked about, you know, the election stuff that we won't get into. But she also yeah. mentioned at the very end that he sent in 650 plane loads to the Vatican and took out our gold from the Vatican Bank, 650 cargo planes. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Exactly. Um, I'll be speaking to Jan soon, actually. So that's interesting you bring yeah. her up. Yeah. So she's back. So I'll be, I'll be doing a show with her soon. And. Oh, that's um, right. She's in the UK. That's right. She's over there. Yeah, she's been she's been vacationing, but she's back now. She's she's got back okay. to that. Um, 
you talk as well about that gold. So I don't know if you film, if, if you film, if you've seen the film Tenet by Christopher Nolan, have you seen, I don't know if you're a big movie buff fan, Matt. I'm, I wouldn't call myself a movie. Do I like movies? Sure. But I wouldn't, but go okay. ahead. What are you going to say about it? Well, I am a big movie, but particular movie. So some of them I like to call Q movies because it's like, I think there's a lot of codes and things in there. So cast your mind back to 2020. The world changed in the spring of 2020. Everything was shut. Then they reopened the cinemas in June or July, about three months later, summer of 2020. And I was like, right, I'm going to the movies. And what they did is they just put on all these old films, the old classic films. So they put on Terminator. That's a big Q movie. All the Batman movies by Chris Nolan, all of his films actually, like Inception, Interstellar, Dunkirk. Dunkirk in numbers is 88 Trump. Um, Inception, they talk about, they say positive emotion, Trump's negative emotion all the time. So they've got all these little Easter eggs about Trump and and the team. And anyway, then they what they did is they brought out, uh, so Back to the Future was there. Even Dirty Dancing, I always thought was a chick flick. That's a proper Q movie. Not in Hill is, and there's, there's these great films they put out. And it was almost like President Trump was saying, Tom, I want you to, because I'd become Tom Numbers by then. I knew the numbers and I was getting the nickname Tom Numbers and doing shows. And it's like, right, get down to the cinema and start decoding, <laughs> which I did. And so I'd be in there watching it and then remembering stuff in my head and all these, it was, it was glorious. It was wonderful. But the film Tenet, T-E-N-E-T, -E -E like Tenet, what do you believe, um, came out. And it's also interesting. It's a palindrome. It's T-E-N-E-T. ET. So if you spell it backwards and forwards, it's the right. same. A bit like special numbers like 141, 121, 131, right. 151. Um, but, or 111, which is a complete way through. But in that movie, there's all these references to what had gone on with 2020. So there's people wearing masks and they talk about lockdowns and it's like right in people's faces. So I'm in there and I'm the only one not wearing one. And there's all these people munching on the popcorn and, you know, doing all that, all spread out. And I'm looking around, I'm like, did they just clock that? They just said lockdowns. And they just talked about masks. They're just carrying on, doing their thing. Anyway, there's a major scene in there where there's an aeroplane that crashes into a hangar and it's full of gold. And all these gold bars fall out. They just fall out on the on the ground. I was like, that's classic comms of the stuff of the back. Because I remember when that tweet came out and President Trump said about they picked up a prisoner from... Uh, was it? I think it was a rap, but Switzerland had been very helpful and they stopped off in Switzerland and then went back off to the US. And that was, I think that was the tweet prior to just prefacing when he said, talked about an RV. He got up in front of the White House and hence is there, all the, you know, the rusty penny, they're all there. And he talks about an RV. And it was, I think it was less than 24 hours prior that the tweet from Trump about this thing in Switzerland and moving stuff around and I was, I was like that's the gold reference and anyway so that was all classic stuff back in 2020 but the film Tenet shows these gold bars falling out the back end of the plane that's you know? that's yeah. so yeah yeah it's been, it's been in front of us the whole time it oh, has it yeah it totally has it's been there all the time all the time yeah and that's I why I've been like that's why that's why I've always liked your work is because you saw this stuff and like I was listening to you a couple of years ago, and I, I forget what you were talking about, but it, it just really started bringing to my attention that there's so much more around us going on. Yeah, it's like, you know, with your talents and what you have come to understand, it's like you see these communications, and it's like the average person is just goes yeah. right by. Yeah, well, it's definitely a gift. It's a blessing. I spoke about it a lot before, but. I I got activated. I mean, I was always awake. I was always looking for answers. But as soon as, you know, <laughs> they 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 contracted the world in one way, some of us got blessed and activated. And I'm sure you had things personally that kept Absolutely. you on during that period. And yes. numbers descended upon me within about three weeks, like three PhDs worth of numbers. And, okay, all right, I'm going to run with it. I could figure out some of the things that are going on. And, you know, so talking of inception, Okay, so Inception is the film with DiCaprio in, and um, and they basically are in dreams within dreams within dreams. And they talk about the kick. So the kick is the thing if, when, you know, when, if you're asleep, but if, you, if you're in a dream and you think you're flying, if you suddenly fall, you'll kind of wake yourself up. It's like this kind of internal kick mechanism to wake people up. Um, and so they demonstrate that in the film. And they say, like, if we're going to create a 
um, we're going to demonstrate, we're going to recreate a kick reaction. It wakes them up and they either go into the next, they go into the next level of the dream or down through whichever way you want to look it up or down. So there's like four levels or so in the dreams uh, of, of dreams. So dreams within dreams, or within dreams, or within dreams. And um, actually my friend, Pat Cash, the tennis player. So he won Wimbledon. He's down in Australian open right now. He's Australian and he won it in 1987, but he's a big fan of that film. He loves Inception. Um, but that's the film that they say positive emotion trumps negative emotions every time. Um, positive is 115, which is 11.5, which is November 5th. Um, it's also many other things, one particular important number as well. But in that film, we see the thing of the kick. So these things of waking up. And I've drawn comparisons with that because the word kick is also leap. So 34 is kick in numbers. Leap is 34 in numbers. Grace is 34 in numbers. And DJT is also 34 in numbers. So I've noticed this pattern of leap years in the last three or four leap years that we've had. So 2012, we had the Olympics, a lot of symbolism with things that are going on, what were going to happen. 2016, Trump got in power. He was voted in. Wasn't there supposed to win. We had Brexit. Brexit in numbers, 78 Kennedy. So we heard that for three years, Brexit, 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 78, Kennedy, Kennedy, you know, heard it. All those celebrities died um, or got taken off the board. You know, come back, Peter, come back, Paul, we'll see a few, I think. And uh, Leicester City here in England, a premiership football club, soccer team, won the premiership out of nowhere. They they were the top team and it should never happen. They should have got relegated. It was like, two thousand, I think, two and a half thousand to one that they one so there's all these weird anomalies that happened in that year in 2016 and then we went to 2020 and that's the biggest one of all time that changed the world where everyone knows what that was now we're in 24 so we're in a leap year so something's coming something's coming. something's coming to remedy the things that have gone on before i don't know how they're going to do it but something's coming something's coming um and in that film so inception comes to 105 which comes to the word savior, 105, comes to Arcturian, 105, um, Inception, 105, but it also comes to Matt Geiger, 105. So I thought I'd put that in anyway, but you know, so, you know. Kind of interesting. Yeah. Inception, one of my favorite, probably my favorite film of Nolan. I gotta watch it. I saw it in theaters and I've, I've never seen it ever since. Yeah, watch it, man, definitely. Cause it's, it probably, all these films I mentioned, when people rewatch them, they probably make a lot more sense, or there's a more, lot more value and flavor right. and understanding to it. Even when I've watched them numerous times, but each time I watch them, I'm like, oh, I missed that, you know? I'll rewatch that. Yeah, definitely worth rewatching. Yeah. Yeah. It's terrible because I, I like DiCaprio, and he's now on the Epstein list. So I kind of feel bad that, you know, all I these, know. All these I people know. you like, man, they're all going down. Fuck. I know. That's the thing that's so, it's like, it's like it's just such a shame and it's it's um i mean i think it's i think we're being shown that there's replacements so there's actors ones that whenever they did stuff or changed or were swapped out but then there's newer ones and i kind of it's like i love all my kind of iconography like music and sports and movies and i love all that stuff because they paint a fabric. They, I use them in my numbers because they're relevant. You know, there's a dark side to numbers and I don't really focus on those, but there's a good glorious num uh, set of numbers. And so I point those out and I highlight them. So in terms of like, when you see actors like that, I've kind of got to the point where I can comp comp kind of compartmentalize. It's like, okay, they can produce a great piece of work, but if they're drafted in and they were, you know, compromised, it's like, it's almost like, pretty much everything at some level been compromised. And it's like, what do you do? Do you throw the baby out with the bathwater? Um, anyway, everyone's got to make their own decisions on that. But uh, I, Christopher Nolan, though, the film director, I've said it many times on shows of one, and he's never said no against it. I think clearly he's a white hat director. I mean, he... I've heard that. Have you? Okay. I believe that. I mean, I've not been told it by anybody other than my own research and my own intuition and... What do you think of uh what's his name? Um the guy who is friends with uh the guy in Venezuela. Um who's the famous director that he's good friends with uh Hugo Chavez. 
Uh, who would that be? I don't know. What films would they do? Oh, he's done so much. See, I'm I'm not a movie buff. Hang on. Let me see. Movie director. I'm just going to Google movie director friends. Okay. Hugo Chavez. Um, Oliver Stone. How could I forget Oliver Stone? Oh, Oliver, Oliver Stone. Okay. Yeah, he did the JFK film, didn't he? Right. Yeah. He could be a white hat, Oliver Stone. Could be, yeah, yeah. Like, he's, he, I mean, if you're friends with Hugo Chavez, I mean, was Hugo Chavez? I'm not saying he was a good guy, but I don't, I don't know any. I only know what I've been told by the, by the yeah. mainstream media, the fake news. But yeah. was he as bad a guy as we were led to believe? It's interesting. Usually, the ones that are painted the worst actually turn out to be not so bad, <laughs> you know. And then the ones that don't have anything great. on them, it's like yeah, they're the just, one, you know. I just question everybody, you know. Yeah. Good. And- yeah, Putin. you have to. Putin you have and to. these guys. Yeah. I mean, we know Gaddafi. We know Gaddafi was not that bad. He was just trying to bring his country out of yeah. the out of the central banking system. He wanted to go to a gold backed currency for Africa. Yeah, exactly. So they stopped him. It's usually, I mean, I think that with most things, it's like if someone's painted as this. Well, we've seen it with Trump. You know, half the world love him, not publicly, but half the world love him, and then half the world maybe it's even more now, but. So many hate him, and it's been deliberate, coordinated attack and character defamation on him. It's like, well, it's obvious. It's like if you, you know, this one's boo-hoo. Well, it's like just kind of basic rule of thumb. We'll look in the opposite direction. It's like, well, if they're painted this awful character, then they're probably not, you know. And then you dig, and then you find out, well, actually, they're not. Um, And that's just how it is. It's like that's (laughs) the perfect people that we think we've – it's like some of them – some of them are probably the worst of the lot, you know, and therefore they didn't have anything on them. They were like Teflon. But the ones that are always having things poked at them, there's a reason, you know. I look back, and one thing I can, the only thing I can speak on Hugo Chavez is I remember back in, I think it was the winter of 2007, he donated a whole bunch of oil to New York City families that couldn't afford heating. Did he? He did. Huh. So at that time, I was like, I thought this guy was a bad guy. Yeah. And that's a pretty nice gesture, you know? Yeah. Is he still around? Is he still alive? No, he passed away years ago, probably okay. within the last five, 10 years. Okay. But Oliver yeah. Stone was good friends with him. I mean. Yeah. And Oliver Stone did the did the JFK film with Costner in it. And yep. yeah, isn't, I think Oliver Stone, what's his son's name? Isn't he kind of in the movement? Or am I getting confused? Um, this is not my not my expertise. I think you might have a son that was kind of open to stuff. But yeah, there's I mean, there's a lot. So one of the things with Christopher Nolan, I've met him briefly a couple of times, but he's kind of he does public appearances and then does his films, but then that's it. He's kind of like this ghost character, really. And he's real, he's out there, you know, he, he come, but you can't like he doesn't have a mobile phone or email, apparently, you know. So keeps cool. himself to himself. But so one of the things I noticed was um, there's a lot of comparisons. And so you've got the Batman films. So he did Batman Begins, The Dark Knight, and then The Dark Knight Rises. And there's a lot of overlay in all those films in regards to what we're, where we're at now. But one of the things that was really interesting was, um, and I noticed this, and I did a comparison early 2020. I think it was the one of the first few videos I did with Charlie and I made this comparison between the films, Wayne's world, Batman and, and Trump. And I said, okay, so you've got Bruce Wayne, Bruce Wayne's a billionaire and he's a vigilante at night. And he's got a tower named after him, Wayne tower. And then I was like, okay, so there's, there's Wayne tower. And there's another film, which is one of my favorites, which is Wayne's world. Love that movie. I love Wayne's World. I think I was 17 when it came out. I just loved it. It was just amazing. And there's the Scooby-Doo ending with the baddies. They get revealed at the end, you know, so that's coming. But then you've got Wayne's World. And then I was saying, well, actually, we're in Trump's world because I was realizing what was going on. So it was like these three, this triumvirate of Batman, Wayne's World, and Trump. And one of his NFTs, I think it's in the second set of, so this is interesting. So 
non-fungible token, a non-fungible token is 185 Donald John Trump in numbers. But he did his NFT series. And I think it's in the second series. One of the NFTs, he actually has got Trump world. So where the Hollywood sign is, is right. actually says Trump world. And I did that like two or three years ago. But he I mean, he inspired me to, to say it, you know, but it's there. It's one of his NFTs. And I was like, well, what a great kind of comeback round. But the other thing about that is with Christopher Nolan. So he did the three uh, Batman films. And then in, uh, I think it's Dark Knight Rises. Yeah, because they filmed that in New... So the first one was kind of a dystopian set. It was kind of all gothic. It didn't really look like a city particular. The second one was in Chicago. You've got Trump Tower and stuff, I think, in Chicago. But the third one was in New York. And that's where I first got my set of numbers. I met Ivanka Trump. Numbers started coming to me, but not in the alphanumeric way. My cousin Paul had passed away. People know my story with that, but numbers is 92. Uh, sorry, yeah, 92. Manhattan's 92. Numbers is 92. Reverse is 92. Perfection is 111. New York's 111. Anyway, so the, the Gotham City is set physically in New York in that third film. And then Trump Tower is actually Wayne Tower in the film. So they actually use Trump Tower for Wayne Tower in Batman in the third one. And then Trump actually gives an endorsement to the film, you know, the third one. He says, it's a great one. He's there in his office in Trump Tower saying, hey, this is this in the movie, you know. But I discovered those things later after I discovered the connection between Trump, Wayne's World, and uh, and Batman. And, um, yeah, so that's... Um, so anyway, Christopher Nolan, the director of all these great films, and he he commandeered Trump Tower to be Wayne Tower in in the third Batman film. So you know there was also that uh, scene with Trump with the little kid in his in his helicopter. Yeah, in 2015, 2016, he's like, "Are you Batman?" And Trump's like, "I'm Batman." Yeah, yeah, exactly. So there's all these things. It's all it's all these vignettes which are exciting, you know, and it just. Yeah, the world is a lot, it's complex. Complex is 88 in numbers. Trump, 88, 88 miles per hour and back to the future, you know. But it's a beautiful woven tapestry of all these timelines, all these things. And it's like, if you look for the light, you find it. Or even now, I think you don't even need to look for it. Like, it just, it's just shining, obviously, in people's eyes that are ready to receive it, you know. Um, and the numbers is one way that it comes. Um, so talking of gold and silver, how about this? So... Donald John Trump in numbers is 185. We have a lot of Christian believers on our show. Book of Revelation is 185. The Silver Reset is 185. Donald Trump, 138, comes to revaluation, comes to the Savior, comes to the Gold Reset. 138. And if you take the number off, take the number one off or just do one times, so it's 185 Donald John Trump, the silver reset, you could do, you could take the one off or just do one times 85. That's one way to look at it. But one times 85 would be 85. And the word silver is 85. The word matrix is 85. The word awakening is 85. The word storm is 85. And if you do 138 Donald Trump, the gold reset, if you just do one times 38, we we'll just take the one off. You're left with 38, and 38 comes to gold. And so Donald John Trump, whichever way you look at it, his numbers are so tied in with precious metals. I mean, another one, he was born in 1946. The atomic number for palladium is 46. If you spell the word rhodium, which is one of the most kind of rare and precious metals out there, I think just under a million dollars a kilo, something like that. You spell the word rhodium, comes to 88, which is Trump, 88. The atomic number is 45. He's the 45th president. And the atomic symbol is RH, which is 26, which is card. So you got the Trump card, you know. So his numbers, and talking of the Kennedy, so the other main precious metal, palladium, sorry, platinum. Platinum is 106 in numbers, which is red filling. But the atomic number for platinum is 78 and the number 
the equivalent to Kennedy is 78. So Kennedy 78, atomic number 78, platinum. So you've got Kennedys and Trumps in all those precious metals, and particularly with Trump, like 138, the gold reset, 138, Donald Trump, 138. 185, Donald John Trump, the silver reset, 185. So it's all there, you know. It's incredible how this stuff just comes together, man. I know. It's there. It's like it's... I didn't make those numbers up, but I found them, you know. It's nuts, man. Just another another whole game being played outside of everybody's purview. No one sees yeah. it. Yeah. It's fun to discover them because, you know, there's always new ones popping up. It's like, oh, okay, yeah. And what gets really fun is when Trump will speak and he'll do timestamps. So he'll say key words, key phrases that I know the numbers to. I know my timestamps. And he'll boom and he'll hit it right on the mark. You know, there's one he did. I've mentioned this before, but this will illustrate it. So I think the second show I ever did like, on Charlie's show. So it was going out. A lot of people were seeing it back then in 2020. And um, I'd just been given the nit. So I was just Tom Sidney Bushnell, which is the way I always start my shows off. So everyone knows who I am. But then I say AKA numbers because I was given the nickname numbers by my friend Jack Kidd. Um, and uh, and then the kind of community, well, it's Tom numbers. So I don't even say Tom numbers really, but people say it. So it's great. You know, it's, a, it's like Midas Matt. I'm sure that's what you're going to be. But it's like they give us these names. Um, but I think after the second show, the Charlie, President Trump, you know, when he used to come out on the tarmac and talk to the press for like a couple of minutes after he got off the airplane or was about to get on, you hear the engines, the turbines going and the wind. And it's like, but you can still hear him. So he's got the press there and he comes out and within three seconds, he says, great job numbers. And I was like, my ears are pricked up. I was like, well, I've just been given this name numbers. So and then he went as in great job numbers for the economy. So he prefaced it, but then, and I think it was only like one minute, 40 seconds or one forty one, the length of the message and mine, Tom numbers is one minute 40 or well, one forty. Um, or Tom Bushnell is one forty one. So I think it's I think I have to check, but I think that video length is only one minute and forty seconds, um, or one minute and forty one seconds. But also he does a personal Easter egg on the timestamp. So my grandmother, her name was Eileen Wood, or I Wood. So that was that was her name. So her sister Doreen would call her I Wood, and her, her friends, her peer group would call her I. That's what you know, E I, I Wood. President Trump gets asked by the press, would he do such and such? I think it's about donating to his own campaign. He said, yeah, if I, if I had to, I would. I was like, he just said Nanny's name. But he did it on 43 seconds, and they lived in Dovedale Close, number 43, for most of their lives. And I was like, wow, this is how this works. And then he kept doing those sorts of Easter eggs continually. So I missed it when he wasn't speaking every night. I missed hearing him every night, you know. Um, because he, he would leave timestamps. He would confirm the work that we were doing. And people said, well, how can you do that? Well, if you're using Gematria, and it's a five-dimensional language, or at least a fourth-dimensional language, he can talk to everybody individually. He can talk to you, leave messages for you, Matt. Talk to Rachel. Rachel gets, you know, he can talk to all of us through this higher consciousness of of the numbers. And that's one way. And people get another way. I mean, I get synchronicities all over the place. The numbers are like a kind of confirmation thread. But I'll get it all day every day, everywhere. And it's brilliant. But I got it from the great man. I was like, wow, this is incredible. You know, he's Rachel's actually confirming our work. Rachel's new video is pretty cool with those numbers for 93. Yeah. yeah 93. Yeah. yeah, exactly. That's a, very, that's a very cool episode. How the numbers touched her. Yeah, exactly. That's how we connected. Cause I, walked into her gin joint in Iowa, of all places, and she's like, you're the number guy. And then she started telling me all her own numbers. And, you know, <laughs> it was like, <laughs> what's that? That's just funny that she said that. You're the number guy. Yeah, you're the number guy. And it was like, man. And then she's, so she's got 93 in her numbers. My last name, Bushnell, is 93. 93 is Flotus. It's Kingship. It's Nazareth. It's, it's a lot of other important numbers in terms of metals and it's just really amazing how it works, you know. Um, and the numbers is one way that people can be communicated via, you know. There's something much bigger than what we've been told on the tin. Matt, you get this. You understand it. 
and it's and a lot of my audience do and it's like it's just amazing it's like okay <laughs> something's going on and it's not it's not what we first think there's something far bigger and greater yes. just beyond the surface of what we think we can see there's something way power more powerful behind and it and it talks to you if you're open to it, it will talk to you yeah you know? yeah so Absolutely. yeah cool. Well, good stuff, buddy. That's been a lot of fun. Our first show. So uh, yeah. I'll probably see you again in a few days, maybe later in the week or early next yeah. week. And we'll, yeah, I'll, we'll, come uh, with, uh, I'll come with some stuff to talk about. I thought today would just be good to just kind of yeah, me on, get to your audience, get to know me. I mean, I've been in your audience forever. So yeah, you know, I'm up well, it's nice to get you from the audience side and get you on the screen so people can get yeah. to, to know you, you know, so and uh say that again so I, I know it comes up but do you want to read out your, no, your phone number again it'll, it'll pop yeah, so up I'm on the screen again so so you can just call me up directly on my phone line uh 480-725-0536 um or just call the company and ask for matt geiger right yeah it's gold group or, you know, two locations one in thousand oaks california and then one here in phoenix thankfully i'm in the phoenix location at a commie California. Yeah. I know Phoenix. Well, I know Mesa. I know Mesa. And you know what? Actually, <clears throat> Phoenix is 91, Space Force, Liberty, Future. So there's a there's a good one there. And if I remember rightly, let me just check Mesa. I know you're not in Mesa, but that's the place. Yeah, so Mesa's 38 gold. So it's like, ah, you know, Phoenix is 91. Future, 91, Liberty, POTUS, 91, Space Force, 91. So it's a good part of the world to be in, for sure. Yeah. Absolutely. Well, good to be with you, Tom, and uh, thanks for uh, thanks for having me. You're welcome, buddy. It was fun to to uh, to kick this all off. It's fun. And it's nice just to kind of dance back and forth with, with cool stuff. What was it I came up with? I was like, actually, the Tom and Matt show, a conversation – amongst enlightened friends and we'll, we'll make you wealthy at the same time. Something like that was the tagline. So, you know, I'll that's probably refine it. What's that? We'll refine it, but that's that wouldn't be bad to start with for now. No, it's good, isn't it? As people want to want... so a friend, uh, a conversation between enlightened friends. That was it. Enlightened friends. That was it. Yeah. 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 So. Cool. Cool. And well, maybe I'll talk to you about the Geiger Muller counter next time. Do you know what that yeah, is? Me too. Yeah, I do. Yeah. Yeah, of course. Yeah. So. <laughs> All <laughs> right. There you go. Cool. All right. Thanks, Matt. Take care, man. Speak hey, soon. Adios. See you in a few days. Bye.